What's up? Welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. With everything going on, I actually decided to do an interview with my friend Casey all about the small business stimulus package. And if you are a salon owner or independent stylist, you need to listen to this. So stay tuned. said this video is going to be really different than what I normally do and I wanted to put this interview together because I think it is so important for stylists and salon owners to really be informed about the benefits that we could be taking advantage of during this time to help keep our businesses afloat. So I'm going to be interviewing Casey Graham who is the CEO of Gravy and they actually work with our team to help with customer retention and failed payment recovery on the online business side of what we do. And the reason why I wanted to interview Casey is because he has been talking about this stimulus package for small businesses and really helping us decipher exactly what it is and how to take advantage of it. And so I really wanted to have him on the YouTube channel because like I said, it's something that we absolutely need to be paying attention to. And I'm just so grateful that he took his time to share this information with you guys. So without further ado, let's jump into the interview. All right, so we are here with Casey and I am just seriously so excited to have you on my channel because when I first saw this entire bill come out, I have to say I was overwhelmed and it was one of those things where I was like, it, does this apply to me? Does this work for my business? And I was starting just to look at the whole thing looking really overwhelmed. And so I actually heard you on a couple of different podcasts and I watched a couple of different webinars and everything that you shared was just so incredible and so simplified. And so um, when you asked to be on the YouTube channel, I was like, yes, let's do this. So um, let's just dive in. But I guess before we dig into this whole thing, can you talk about really what's kind of happening in the world and really how this is affecting the market, this whole COVID-19 situation? Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for having me and hello to everybody listening um, or watching. So here's the bottom line. There's three things that this has never happened before. So when you go back and you study all of the different crashes um, that have happened, stock market crashes, um, they're all something a little different caused each one of them. And every single one of them were like a macro financial thing, like some like, you know, thing it would take 30 minutes to explain. A bat virus <laughs> attacks the world. Um, you got the coronavirus, um, number one, which I call, you know, it's like an atomic virus, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, it, and, and what it did is it came in and it exploded the second thing of the small business markets. Mm -hmm. So just like everybody listening to this, if they're a salon owner or they do hair or whatever it is, I mean, all of a sudden you can't be around people. So this small business crisis happens, which has never happened at this, the level that's happening now. And at, at the same time, a capital market crisis. So for, mm -hmm. for people listening, like capital markets would be like these big companies in the stock market and people looking at their 401ks or retirement if they have it going, oh my God, I lost 30% of my account, you know, in two weeks, those kind of things. Usually only the capital market thing happens, but you have all of these things happening at once. So number one is there's a psychological fear life disruption, crazy disorder. Number two is there's the small business crisis. Number three, capital market. And so this puts us in a situation that we've never been in. Mm. Um, and it puts us in a situation to where if you're listening to this and you're a small business owner, um, your fear was probably really high. Um, you're probably thinking, how are we going to make it? How are we going to do all this thing? And the first thing I'll say before we get into all this is this was like a health 9-11. Mm. So um, obviously that was a terrible terrorist attack and that was what it was for that. But from the standpoint of this was one of those things where life will never be the same again. And if you're listening to this and you think, oh, I just can't wait for everything to get back to normal. Business is changing. Like you used to be able to walk somebody to a gate before 9-11 and you couldn't do that after that. There's going to be a lot of those where you can't do that anymore or it's different or there's fear or they're scared. And there's just some things that are never going to go away. And so as we talk about this, we've got to realize that you've got to grieve the old way of business and that your stimulus check that we're going to talk about that you get 
is not the best plan for you. It is a short term fix to help you with cash, but you are the best stimulus plan for you mm -hmm. and you understanding inside of this market, the different opportunities that will come out of this for your industry and for who you are and how you do business and what things are and what they aren't is where the real opportunity comes in. I love that. I'm so grateful that you brought that up because I think right now so many business owners are living kind of in fear and in the moment of just like, yeah. hey, day to day to day, which is natural because so much totally. is going on, right? But how do we look beyond this and how do we look and kind of help almost predict, not that we can predict, but predict what's going to be going on after this is all over. So I am so glad that you brought that up. So let's dive into exactly what is the CARES Act specifically and what does it really mean for us as small business owners? Yeah, the CARES Act, um, number one, let's be clear, this is a United States of America Act. Right. Right. Um, so this is for the US and it's a $2.2 trillion. So to put that in perspective, <laughs> let's just put that in perspective. Let's just say um, your annual budget at your household is $100,000 a year. If you had combined incomes of the family or whatever, that would be like instantly $50,000 of cash coming into your bank account. So it's half of right. what it takes to run the country. So $2.2 trillion. Okay. And depending on when you listen to this, there's going to be more. So there's okay. going to be more, there's going to be more coming out of that. The big buckets are, and people listening is very important, is that indiv every individual, there's individual benefits that you can take advantage of uh, where they're giving money to just individuals that are saying, we're going to put money into your bank account, direct deposit or check for you. And that you can then have that money to either keep, spend, invest, whatever you want to do with it. So everybody should be looking into that. Okay. But the but but, but the, the the other two, there's many sections, but big picture is capital market. So companies like Delta, you know, big companies. So we're not going to deal with that. Right. The the small business portion is three hundred and fifty billion dollars. Now to put that into time perspective, because I don't really, you don't really get money perspective. Right, right. I want you to just guess how many years in equivalent to seconds, if we're talking seconds, is 350 billion seconds in time. I don't even know. 10 years? <laughs> I have no idea. 10,970 something years. I forget the 10,000 plus years. Okay, so I was a little off. Okay. Human history. <laughs> written human history that we have written is 6,000. So right. plus four of that. So almost double written human history. So when you think about that, the massive amount of money they carved out to pump into the people listening to this is important. Mm -hmm. And th there, there's, there's the PPP, pay, the Paycheck Protection Program that they put in there as a specific program for people listening to this is if they didn't give money to small businesses like you and I that are listening right now or contractors or mm -hmm. solopreneurs, like all of these people like can absolutely apply. They knew that unemployment would go from the best it's ever been to the worst it's ever been. It could go over to over 30% unemployment. Now, the right. macro, the macro perspective of this is of like, I, and then we're going to get down to the details, but I want everybody to understand that like, this is not like a welfare program. This is not mm -hmm. like, Hey, we're just going to give you money. And we don't, this is no, no, no. We understand that we, the government have made everybody stay home. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you've got to have money. And so get this money. And the goal of it is, is paycheck protection that you and your people would stay employed at the same level at or before February 15th, 2020. And so at the end of the day, it's keeping America employed and keeping America working because if the person, if, if the person listening to this uh, is paying people or contractors, mm -hmm. or there's all these different things, if they can't pay the rent, then the rent guy can't pay the mortgage. If they can't pay right. the mortgage, there's this huge trickle down effect. And so everybody listening to this, it is your, it, this, I, I, the number one thing I heard from people was, well, I feel guilty. Mm. Like I'm not a restaurant or I'm not a brewery. I didn't get hit like they did. That's not the point. Right. The point is to right. keep everybody employed and to right. keep anybody paying to keep paying so that we can keep our economy going. So that's the macro perspective of what it is. Cool. 
So I guess, how do these small businesses know if they're actually eligible for this stimulus money? Like, how does that all work? What's the stipulations? I know you have yeah. a lot of info on that. Yeah, you had to be in business before um, February 15th, 2020. Okay. okay. So um, you've got to have an EIN number, so a tax ID number. Okay. Um, and you, ha you have to be a, a business and you have to have paid uh, some type of payroll or contractors because when you go to a, when you go to uh, get approved for this loan, uh, some of the backing paperwork that they're going to ask you for is proof that you have people employed or you're employed um, or people that you've paid. And so that's the, the calculation of this um, will be that. And you've got to have under 500 employees um, is another one, which not many people listening necessarily to this show yeah. will, will have to deal with. Uh, right. But but those are the those are the stipulations. Okay, so I guess the question is, you said they have to have an EIN number and they have to have paid somebody. Does that mean just W-2 employees? Can that be a 1099 contractor? How does that all work? Well, what's funny when they brought it out, they had everybody lumped into one and they said W-2s and 1099s were all together. And the way you get to your calculation, and we'll get to that in a minute of what's your calculation of how much you can get. The right. way it, it included that, the day before the program went live, they ripped 1099s out of the calculation mm. and they said, they said, we're still going to allow 1099s to get paid, but they have to apply on their own. Okay. And so you apply on your own. The business owner that has the W-2 workers or whatever wouldn't apply for you that they, they apply. Now, then the question becomes, if you're the business owner, do I not pay the 1099 contractor? Right, right. right. And so there's a mess happening inside of there. I don't know why they pulled it out at the last minute, but right. that's up to you to decide with you and your CPA specifically of like how you Perfect. want to manage that. Okay. But there is coverage for both. Okay. Um, and, but the calculation is important of how it works out. Gotcha. And so I think one of the big questions might be for my audience is a lot of them are just 1099 employees. So from what you're sharing right now, or 1099, not employees, <laughs> 1099 individual, yeah, independent contractors, um, then they would just apply on their own, it sounds as if. Yeah, there's a there's a okay. separate application uh, that okay. they created for that. And it was vague and gray, and I'm so mm. sorry it's vague and gray. Yeah. But when it came out, it said it's not included now. Okay. And on this date, which was going to be like seven days later from businesses being able to apply, that the 1099s, uh, that the contractors would be able to apply. But okay. that is it's true. It's real. Uh, and there's money available for, for every single one of these scenarios. Perfect. Yeah, that's super helpful because I think having that distinction, a lot of my audience is just independent contractors. And so knowing that they can apply and still this still works for them is huge. That's a Very, big, huge thing. Yeah, it is. It is. Let me give my disclaimer. I'm not a CPA. Totally. I'm not a CPA. Uh, I'm friends with a lot of really good ones and people that uh, we got the bill very early. I was up the night at 1132 when the bill passed. There were yeah. 10 people from an accounting firm called Warren Abrett. They were, they were going through it through the night, breaking it down, making it simple. And so I'm just siphoning off information from like the really smart people. I love it. <laughs> and I'm going like, hey guys, I'm from Alabama. Tell me the, the Casey's from Alabama version of this. And then I'm trying to get it out as much as possible. And so the most important thing people listening to this should that it should do is go ask a CPA mm. or go ask anybody in your local area, financial advisor, anybody like, where do I go? What do I do? Right. Uh, because every single specific scenario and situation is different. Totally, totally. And that's the biggest thing I think with this whole interview is not to necessarily say you should do this or this is what no. you necessarily qualify for. It's just to educate you and to just get the information out there because I think it, it can feel very overwhelming and confusing. And so, um, yeah, I, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, okay. So to become eligible, um, it basically says you have to be impacted, right? You said you have to have 500 yep. employees, you have to be in business and then you have to be impacted Right. by COVID-19. Is that still a gray area? What are they saying with all of that? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, they get like impacted in sales, uh, in supply chain. Like okay. I can't get, I can't get my shampoo, you know, right. that's, my, that's or my clients can't come into the salon. That would be Im impact. Impacted. If okay. your business or you have been impacted in any way, um, you know, uh, so, so, so there's, there's these vague, it's essentially the bottom line is you probably have. Right. <laughs> Right. But there isn't like a test you take or like okay. a, there's not a formula that you go through um, that, that, but when you show up, 
to the bank or when you show up online to fill out the forms in good faith, essentially, like for instance, if Zoom went and tried to fill this out, it's like, right. okay, bro, your business, you know, so they healthcare skyrocketed. Company, right. they skyrocketed. No, no, no. Right. But for if your business is taking a dip, if you've taken a hit, if you've personally, well, all of those different kind of things, you can't get the stuff you need, if all of those rates, if you've been impacted, you show up with good faith saying, we have been impacted and we need this. And the reason we need this is to keep our people employed, pay our rent, um, pay uh, any interest on any debt obligations. If you have any debt obligations, the interest on that, and then pay any utilities or, or, or things to stay in business, those kind of uh, utilities. And so uh, that's what you would, that's what you would say. Cool. And I think that's really helpful too, because as in the hair industry and beauty industry, and that's most people watching this, they have been impacted. Their clients totally. can't come in, they've had to shut down. And so obviously they would, you know, qualify. Um, but I think it's great that you brought up, not only can this apply towards the funds can go towards um, paying your employees and uh, getting that kind of money, but also rent, which is huge because I know there's been so many salon owners that have been really yeah. impacted by this, not able to pay rent. Um, and even stylists that rent chairs from salon yeah, owners who are independent contractors, yeah. it gets complicated, but yeah, this could absolutely be something that you could use to pay your rent, which is so, so huge. So that actually kind of brings me to my next question is how is the loan amount determined? Very important that you said loan because this is a loan mm -hmm. uh, from the small, uh, small business association. So it is a loan. How, which is good because honestly, the loan, uh, which they said, which I haven't seen until it's in paper and there's money in the account, but they said is a 1% annual interest rate. Okay. Wow. 1%, which is essentially okay. for free. Basically. Yeah. That's crazy. Unheard of. So you shoot, yes, you have to pay the money back, but you don't have interest in, you know, this, that, and the other. So, right. um, over a 10 year period. So okay. that's what the, the initial document said. Okay. That's great. But what's even, I mean, good. What's great is that if you, once you get the money, you have an eight week ticking clock to spend the money on st uh, staff, keeping your staffing levels the same. Okay. So your employees, your rent, your expenses, your, uh, your, uh, your payroll, um, any medical, like you pay medical or dental. I know a lot of people in this industry may not do that, uh, yeah. but utilities and all that stuff. And okay. if you use the money for those things, it becomes forgivable. So it moves from loan to essentially right. grant. And this is like, I can't overestimate. They need you to put this money to work. Right. Um, they want you to put it to work. And they want you to keep people to work and keep people paid because if we keep going down this pathway for too long, I, it just creates such, it creates such a massive nightmare that, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the untangling for years will be just a disaster. So um, that's why this is important for you to understand, get the money, use it for the approved expenses. And then from that, you'll be able to have it forgiven. Yeah, and I think this is super huge, especially in the salon and beauty world, is a lot of people maybe haven't been able to pay their employees the way or they let them go. And so I know you were kind of saying the whole reason the, this bill was made was so that people don't have to go on unemployment and we can keep paying our employees and we can right. keep paying our independent contractors or whatever, like so that they're still having a job during this time. And that is huge for not only for business owners being able to provide that for their employees, but also for the employees to have that money coming in, in a time where they're not able to do their job because it's been shut down. So, um, so I think going back real quick, how is that loan amount, uh, determined, I guess, how much, where does that come from? Yeah. So it's a calculation and essentially what you do is you go back, uh, from February 15th, 2020, Okay. Um, to February, February 15th, 2019. Okay. And if you've been in business that long, now you may have been only six months, you may have only been two months before that. Right. Okay. But what you do is either over the life of the business or that length of time, you take what your average payroll is, including okay. um, salary, health insurance, uh, you know, those that it used to be 1099s, they took that out. Right. Um, and let's just say it was $5,000, okay? That was the average. It wasn't the high month or a low month. Right. That was the average month. 
Okay. You time you times that five thousand dollars times two and a half, so okay. two and a half times that amount, which would give you what? Um, I can't do math in my head. <laughs> would it be twelve hundred fifty dollars? <laughs> No, twelve thousand, twelve thousand, twelve thousand five hundred dollars. I was like, "Wow, I can't do math." Both of us trying to do math here. Here we go. Um, and so you get twelve thousand five hundred bucks, and okay. that's what you, you could apply for. And then, okay. um, like we've already done it, so we've actually gone through the application process. Cool. Um, we did it, and then uh, we're approved, and now we're just waiting on money. The timing okay. of that. They right. said they said really fast, and I don't know what really fast means for the government, uh, <laughs> but I would I would anticipate weeks, okay. um, probably two to three weeks. But they're saying it could be two to three days, so I don't okay. know that. Okay. But then that money gets deposited, direct deposited into your account. What we're doing at Gravy is keeping a separate um, checking account, okay, with with the money in it to just show that we've used this money mm. against the expenses that we said we would so that it would become forgivable perfect um or the portion that would become forgivable would be in that now one okay. other thing i will say that people need to know if you only use ten thousand of the twelve thousand five hundred during the time period uh the remaining balance that you did not use for those approved expenses would then become the loan okay now okay. very important there's six months before you actually even owe a loan payment after that. Wow. Okay. So you can then pay the loan back at any time or right. pay when it starts six months from then. You do not need a personal guarantee, which is unheard of. Mm -hmm. And they aren't doing credit checks or looking for other credit sources of like how much credit you have other places. And so- wow. It's, it's, it's unprecedented, but it had to be unprecedented. Right. Like they had to keep it loose and gray almost to get the speed. Like they couldn't run people through all the, you know, tests. And so right. people going, but people are like, is this true? And it's like, yes, right. it's true because it has to be. Right. And so that's the, that's the details of it. Cool. So I guess one last question is where do people go apply for this? And do you have some more information um, that you guys have been giving out to people? Yeah, I go, well, we have onlinestimulus.com. Uh, okay. It's one page. Uh, we keep cool. updating it as we get stuff and links and helpful. Onlinestimulus.com. Cool. Uh, there's no email address required to get in. You just go check it out. You go to any FDIC approved bank. That can be an online institution like cabbage.com uh, with a K. Um, hmm. Lindy, Lindio would be another one. Okay. Um, so there's ones like that that are, that are online financial institutions approved by the FDIC or your local bank, or your big bank, your Bank of America, or your this, that, and the other. And again, the banks get to decide whether they want to be a part of the program or not. Gotcha. And they may or may not want to be a part of the program. Uh, I don't want to get into why they would or wouldn't. Yeah. It doesn't matter for this audience. Right. But um, you can call a local bank and a local banker, and we've seen that a lot of people had way more success doing that and going, hey, who do we partner with? How do we get there? And then from there, there will be an online application that you fill out. After the application, there will be documentation where you've got to show documentation from your books. And so it's a point here where I say, a lot of people are gonna be going, I don't have books. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what you teach your crowd, honestly, right. but this is like where people gotta wake up and go, you know, even if I'm a, a business of one person, I need like legit finances and yeah. I need quick books or whatever. And I need somebody to help me with my books and not just doing, you know, grabbing money here and there and putting it in accounts and pulling it and moving it and all that kind of stuff. Because when these things happen, uh, it expo essentially what the coronavirus will has done to us is create a pop quiz for everybody's business. <laughs> there you go. <gasps> yeah. And it's just, it's showing where you're strong, where you're weak. And mm. so for this, uh, a lot of people will be weak in that. Uh, but uh, you can uh, go to any of those banks and that's how you do it. Cool. Yeah. And just so you guys watching this, uh, I actually have a video on how to organize your finances. So I'll put that in the link in the description and then also online stimulus.com in the description below. So you can check those out. But um, man, I think we covered so much. We did it so quickly. I appreciate yeah. you for being here, for sharing this with my audience. I think, like I said, it can feel really overwhelming and not knowing where to start and just having somebody like you come in, answer all these questions, just is so, so helpful. So I just want to say thank you. I don't think there was anything else. I think we got to most of it. Is there anything else that you wanted to add? The last thing I would say is 
there's a lot more in this bill mm. that applies to the average person than you could possibly ever even imagine from tax benefits and different things you can do. So um, you don't have to go be an expert in it, but I would highly recommend, like if you're ever like, I wonder where there's some free money laying around. Well, it's here. Okay. And there's some benefits and I would, I would just uh, urge people I know, and I'm not, listen, I don't like CPA accounting, all that stuff. Right. But when I'm like, oh, there's benefits available, I'm in. So some of the best benefits. So, so I would absolutely encourage everybody to get completely educated on what this means for you as an individual, what this means for you as a business mm -hmm. and uh, from an income perspective of getting money. And then from a tax perspective, two very good things. Okay, cool. And would you recommend probably going to your CPA to kind of get some more information on that stuff? Yeah, I, I will. But what cool. I've also found is a lot of the CPAs are like, don't even really know yet. Okay. And so like, look, what you need to do is look for like the entrepreneur, there's entrepreneurial C CPAs like on LinkedIn. And those mm -hmm. are the ones I'm following that are like real time. Like cool. Getting okay. it out because CPAs don't like to give you information until like it's all checked out like 57,000 right. times. Right. So uh, anyway, yeah. Cool. Go do okay. It. That's super, super helpful. Um, yeah. Thank you so much Thanks. for being here today and just for sharing this with my audience. I really, really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. All right. Bye. All right, guys, I really hoped that this interview with Casey helped you out. Like I said, I will link all of those things in the description box below. Please go check them out. And like Casey mentioned at the end, make sure to look into the things that you have as benefits, not only as small businesses, but also as individuals, because there's so many options out there for us. And we want to make sure that we're taking full advantage of them. So like we both said in the interview, as a disclaimer, neither one of us are CPAs, as you know, and so definitely make sure to to check with your CPA to get all the information specifically for your business. But I hope, like I said, this interview helped you decide what you need to look into and really just gave you some more information about the small business stimulus package. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that it was helpful. And again, if you have any more questions, head over to onlinestimulus.com. They have been updating that page. It has been a huge resource for me and my team and our business. And so I definitely recommend you check it out. As always, thank you so much for watching. I know this video was a little bit different than what I normally do, but I hope that it was helpful. And that is my goal with every video that I do here on my YouTube channel is to bring you helpful information for you to grow and build your business as a hairstylist or salon owner. So if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, make sure to do so now. And I will see you guys next time.